Good morning. I thought I'd share a morning practice with you. And I'm recording today on my iPad for the first time, so we'll see how that goes. I see, I either have to cut off the feet or the head, but this is all gonna work out in the long run. We'll figure this out. So, um, a morning practice. So, what is a morning practice or your daily practice? It really depends on what you, what your body needs, what your body mind needs, what you as a person needs. There, um, there are all sorts of sequences one could do, uh, but the thing about a morning practice is you do it for you. You do it to get the day started. You do what your body needs. And so as in much of yoga, for me it's an organic sort of folding, unfolding if you will. Um, and so this is the time where I just come to the mat, Bogies, this is Bogey, my kitty, Bogart, Bogey for short, and um, he usually comes in and he works around, moves around because I do the first part standing, but I do a lot seated because it's morning. I haven't even had my breakfast or tea yet. So it's like I'm doing the things that my body needs after sleeping all night and to get me ready for the day. So my practice varies and yet there are some similarities. So I'll sort of talk to you while I go through this and um, tell you what I do and what feels good and what talks to me. And, and then it's you decide, especially if you've been doing yoga for a while, you start to come to the mat. Many days I come to the mat and I feel like, oh, I just can't move. But the minute I get up into downward facing dog, which is the first pose, Uttanasana, standing forward bend, or Adho Svanasana, uh, which is downward facing dog, they tend to be the first couple I do after just a nice little opening up. So I'll kind of show you what I do and what I feel like doing today. And you're welcome to use that as a cue to your morning practice. But whatever you do, um, if you do four to five times a week, 10 to 15 minutes every day, your body will start getting used to that. You're gonna to start to want it more and it becomes part of your normal routine. And as we develop healthy habits, normal routine with some healthy habits is a really good thing. And so that you start to miss it when you don't. And that's your body talking to you, not your head. And so listen to your body. Uh, we have an intuitive sense that's always there. I know, hello. We have an intuitive sense that's always there if we simply listen to it. So let's see what happens today. So welcome. Oh, and I always like to start with a nice little ohm. You can join or not, but this sort of just sets the pace for the day. So if you'd like, take a comfortable seat with it, whatever that is for you. I'm sitting in Vajrasana right now, which is me sitting, um, my four lower legs are parallel and my toenails are down and I'm just gonna sit back on my heels. Now I'm not slumping down because that's hard on your feet. I have to sit upright as I do this. So there's energy. I'm pressing my toenails to the earth. I'm lifting up through the crown of the head, which is something always we want to do. And so there's not so much weight on my heels, but this is comfy for me. Aside from the fact that I stubbed my left big toe last night, which is starting to talk to me. So sit in a way that's comfortable for you. Then you can bring your hands to your heart. And I just like to start the day with one nice ohm. So please exhale fully and then inhale and join me if you'd like or simply listen. Ah. All right, Boogie, let's see what happens today. All right, so you're going to have to move just a little bit. There you go. Good boy. So Uttanasana, standing forward, fold. And generally, I just kind of move a little bit side to side with the hips, just to kind of loosen things up when I'm first starting out here. And then I'm gonna come up. And so and I have a little arthritis in the fingers, so you're gonna see oftentimes I'll be on the tops of my knuckles. You can be on your fingertips. You can do whatever you want with your hands. Um, and if you don't bend this deeply, which many people don't, bring your hands to just below your knees or just above your knees, and just this, just this nice forward motion will be good. 
All right, so then if you're down lower, you can use blocks as well. Again, I'm not assuming you all have blocks, but if you don't have blocks, you take a couple of books. Right now, my thickest books are propping up my iPad, so I don't have those to show. I have a lot of thinner books, and you could stack several, uh, but logistically moving them, it takes a little more, but they'll work. Okay. All right, so from standing forward then, all right, and let me get my, uh, so here, I'm, I'm, in act, I'm getting my activity, let me do my yoga practice today. All right, so I'm in forward fold. On my inhale, I come up. Now I do reverse swan dive arms all the way up. If you have low back issues, you're gonna place hands on your hips, fingertips forward, thumbs back, elbows up, and slowly bring your lengthened spine up, leading with your heart as you anchor down through your legs. Then I like to take the arms all the way up into Urdhva Hastasana, upward facing arms and hands at the heart. And I'm gonna start with like, we'll see, a half sun salutation, that's what I have in mind. So on the inhale, arms all the way up. Exhale, swan dive, hands out to the side or hands on your hips, all the way down to the earth. Inhale, I lengthen the spine in a pranam. I just put the hands on the knees, get really long again to lengthen and strengthen my back and my core. Exhale, I'll come down. That felt so good, I'm gonna do it twice more. Inhale, up, and exhale, down. And inhale, up, and this time I'm gonna exhale down, place my hands on the earth, and step my left leg back to a straight leg lunge. And because I do have some shoulder issues, yeah, most yoga teachers have a lot of the things that you do. I have low back, arthritis and some joints, and um, a bunch of other little stuff, but it doesn't stop me. And it's because of doing the yoga that I'm able to continue to, to move and function with very little pain. You know, a little aggravation now and then, but not a lot. And as, um, as you do the, the lunge here, this front hip wants to just hang out. You want to take it back so that your hips line up with each other, and that's good for your back, good for your spine. And then, hands to the earth, I'll step the right leg back, downward facing dog. Oh, first one of the day. All right, so walking your dog, you keep your hips up, and bend your knees a little bit, just kind of uh, sort of bend in place. And again, that's just creating a little bit of motion, a little bit of movement, a little mobility. That feels really good, really good this morning. All right, then I'll take a nice full dog, to get your hips up in a downward facing dog, bend your knees a little bit, press from the back of your heart down into the mat, and that's gonna take your hips higher. Once your hips are up, then you, can, you wanna lengthen from your sit bones down through the soles of your feet, not press back with your knees. As someone who hyperextended her knees for, oh, I don't know, 15 years, all my life really, until I came to yoga, um, when you learn not to lock your knees, you're less likely to have knee issues related to that. All right, so then I'm gonna lift my left leg up and bring it forward, lunge, side two. And again, so when you, can you see that when I use the blocks, I have a nice longer line from the crown of my head all the way down to my foot, whereas my hands are on the ground um, because I have a little more stuff in the middle here. It's hard to keep that nice alignment. And if you have neck tightness, it's gonna tighten your neck more. So using blocks can be a real help. All right, so I do a nice little lunge here, take my left hip back. Good, and place the blocks back down, hands on the mat, step back again, downward facing dog. So this time I'll lift my right leg up, bring it forward. I'm gonna press the right leg down. Oops. Press the right leg down, uh, right foot forward, bring the left foot down. All right, then I inhale, come all the way up, come up nice and slow into warrior one, Virabhadrasana one. I just love this pose. I used to not like it so much because it's hard to keep the hips more straight, but I've done it, I've been doing it more and more. What's interesting is, the pose you don't like, keep doing it. 
it starts to get easier and better. Now when I exhale, I'm gonna come down slow. I'm gonna press into the back leg, keep my spine length and long, and this is core work. You also feel this more in your back left calf. Then I can bring the hands back down, press back again, downward facing dog. Feeling good this morning. Good, then lift the left leg up, bring the left leg forward, good. And slowly inhale, bring the arms forward. Mm -hmm. Come all the way up as you spin, and I didn't spin it down first, but now I can spin the right heel down. All right, so again, warrior one, Virabhadrasana one, really powerful pose that feels really, it's like you come alive, it feels so good. So after a few breaths there, now again, I'm gonna come down slow, anchor through the back leg, really work my core, work my spine, get really, really long. Core work is always good because you benefit by stronger muscles and stronger ability to do so many things. Bring the hands back down and step back, downward facing dog. Adamukha Svanasana. Feeling good. And so, you know, as I, I'm just warming, I'm still warming up. So I play whatever feels good. This feels good today. All right, then an inhale, I'm going to float to plank, palankasana. If you have low back issues, keep your hips a little higher. But be sure that your shoulder blades are on your back. Yeah? All right, so from plank, now... I don't do many Chaturanga Dandasanas. That's when you lower yourself down like a reverse push-up. Because again, I have shoulder issues. So I'll do a few and then I'll modify. So as I exhale, I bring, I squeeze my elbows together, bring my whole body down to the earth. How about a locus, Shonabhasana today? So take your arms forward, all right? And then as you inhale, let's do reverse Shalabhasana. So I lift my left arm and my right leg. I take a breath or two. And exhale, come back down. Lifting up like this is easier for most people as far as a gentle back bend, and it's good for most everybody's back. Inhale, left arm up, right arm up, left leg. I can feel my heart racing, not racing, but you know what, you can feel it pumping more. You're starting to get more energy in. Good, then exhale, placing the hands underneath the tops of the shoulders, heads of the arm bones. I'm gonna press back up into plank and come back up to downward facing dog. Oh, this feels good today. Been doing more walking since we're, uh, since I'm, you know, can't get out as much. So I'm walking a little bit more, which is kind of nice. All right, then, I'll start with the left foot. I'm going to take the left foot forward so that you guys can see me. All right, and I'm going to come on up um, in, into Alanasana. So keeping the left leg bent, right toes. It's like a lunge without your hands on the ground. And again, I'm going to take the arms up. So this is it. it oh, let's do this. Interlace the hands right behind the head and take the elbows forward. And then I can sort of press back a little bit sort of like I'm in a cosmic headrest for a little bit more of a back bend. Then the arms are up, and again, I'm gonna come forward. I like these opportunities to really strengthen the core a little more, taking a few breaths. Good, exhale, hands come down. I'll take the left leg back, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing doggy. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, right leg forward. And on your inhale, slowly come up into Alanasana. So this is like, this is like warrior one, but can sometimes be more approachable for people who have a hard time getting that back foot down. It's called crescent lunge Alanasana. All right, and then I reach forward. Again, getting nice and long. So I feel there's such length here, which feels really good. Exhale, the arms back down. And on the inhale, I'll step the left leg forward and exhale, fold. And so here you can play a little bit. You can 
play with interlacing your hands. If you get down a little lower, you can put your hands on the backs of the calves and maybe you go a little deeper. Ooh, yeah, I feel that in the hamstrings today. Good. Then inhale all the way up. Reach all the way up. And exhale, hands at your heart. At my heart. All right, so now nice wide stance. I'll do a few standing poses and I'll come down and finish with a few seated things. Standing poses feel really good. So standing poses really get your energy going. They feel good. You ground to the earth. You're in your legs. And when we're feeling stress, tension, and if we're tired, we tend to be sort of, uh, I don't want to say out of the body, but we're not so connected to what's going on. So having your legs wide, having your feet grounded, makes you feel strong, energetic, and it's revitalizing. All right, so wide stance, we'll go to the right first. So you can keep the left foot, classically the left foot stays exactly where it is. But if you need a little more opening into this left hip area, you step the left heel back a little bit. All right, and then you can turn the right foot out to 90 degrees. Again, classically, the heel lines up with the instep, the right heel lines up with the instep of the left foot. For women, sometimes that's harder. So feel free to step the right foot back a little bit so that you're heel to heel. That gives the pelvis a little more space to move. So there are always ways to modify the poses to make them more uh, adaptable for your body and where you are in your journey. All right, so taking the arms out, if you bring your arms in front, open them up, throw them open wide, and then just turn your palms down, your shoulder blades are on your back. So take up, we'll just do three poses on each side. Take a nice breath in, exhale, bend the right foot, and you see me moving my foot a little bit more forward because I can go a little deeper, but I want to be sure that this right knee lines up with the right ankle. All right, so then I can look over my right arm, and this is warrior two. So we take a breath, and this is harder than where your hands are on something. You got nowhere for your hands to be. You got to really work your legs. So this is warrior two. We take three or four breaths here. Then I can take the, now the right palm up as you bring the right forearm to the right thigh, left hand to your left hip. Um, so that's a variation of extended side angle, Uttita Parjvakanasana. For someone who is not as, uh, you know, maybe not as advanced, because this is just for everybody, then you would be here. Hi folks. If you're needing, if you want to go a little deeper, you can take the right hand to the floor, and then left hand, fingertip, left thumb to the top of the left shoulder, and over. Now turn your whole side body open. Oh, that feels good. Again, this long lengthening opens up all the tissue. It's just lovely. Then inhale, come back up. Now walk your left hand back a little bit, right hand back a little bit, and take your left arm up for triangle. You can take your hips back a little bit. If you want, take your left hand, reach underneath, turn your whole from your underside open, and then take your left arm back up. Hi. I know you know I'm coming down to the mat in a little while. All right. All right, now to come back up, if your balance is a little off, feel free to look down towards the front foot as you come up. Okay? If not, then you let the universe grab your top arm, come back up, turn your feet parallel. Awesome. All right, now, with the wide stance, again, step the right heel back if you want. This is yoga with cat, you know? This is my morning practice. All right, so then you turn the left foot out. And again, now we're lined up and ready to go for warrior two. So as you inhale, bring the arms in front, open them up. Yeah, I don't want to be in your way or anything, Bogues. Is this cool? Good. Palms down. Take a nice breath in. As you exhale, bend the front knee. The left knee, look over your left hand. Warrior two. Sometimes we find we want to be too far in the future or too far in the past. So you want to come right here where the crown of the head is over the pelvic floor. That's This is Tadasana from here to here, mountain pose. And this is mountain pose with your legs in a different place. This is mountain pose with your arms in a different place, meaning that everything we do should have the energy of the mountain of Tadasana. Good. Turn your left palm up, right hand to your right hip as you come into Uttita Parjvakanasana. Extended side angle. 
and this is fine. Or you can take this left hand down, right arm up, and shoot it towards the wall. And turn your whole right side open. Feels so good. Extended side angle. Good, now let's come up to triangle. So I'll show you what I mean. If your balance is a little off, you can take your top hand to your top hip, look down towards this left leg, place your hand into the left, into, above the left knee, then straighten the knee. All right, then you can stay there for your triangle, you can come there for your triangle, or you can take your hand to the earth, right where your kitty tail is. Good, and you open up. Trikonasana, Utida, extended Trikonasana. On your inhale, come all the way back up. This time, turn your feet to parallel. If there's a kitty, you gotta move Mel away. Okay, and take a nice breath in. Now, you're gonna hinge right here where your legs meet your trunk, okay? Your torso. So turn your palms up, take your pinky finger here, press your hips back as you come forward. And again, you may use blocks here, or your whatever you're using for blocks. Hello, baby. Okay, you could have them high. Uh, you don't want to put a lot of weight if you're on the high side of like an egg, but you can come to wherever you want to come. So you just come to where it feels good. And this morning, this feels good. And you just take a few breaths. Good, then your inhale, come halfway up. Now, you can bring your hands to your hips and come up if you're advanced, like so. But if not, you're gonna heel, toe, heel, toe. I'm sorry, heel, toe back to standing forward bend. Bring your hands to your hips. Inhale, press through your hips, lead with your heart, come all the way up. And exhale, hands at your heart. All right, so those, uh, a few, um, some salutation modifications and a lot of cat hair. And um, let's do, I'd like to do a little core work here. Okay, so a couple of ways that you can do it. <clears throat> Coming on to your belly, okay, onto your, your, you know, prone here, and your forearms are in sphinx pose. That means that the elbows are underneath the tops of the shoulders and the arm, hands and arms are parallel. Now I turn the toes under because I wanna internally rotate my legs to open up my hips. So some people do it by lifting a leg, extending the foot, bringing it back down, lifting, extending, bringing it back down. And if that works for you, good. I like to come up with my toes and take my heels out like I'm pigeon toed, then put the thighs back down, then turn the toes back. Okay, we want the toes turned under for this one. All right, so now from here, I'm going to lift the feet and then come on up and you're working your feet as if they're standing on the ground. Lift my bottom so that it's, it's the same height or slightly higher than my shoulders. And this, and if you'd like, you can bring your palms together, which may be easier uh, and more supportive or keep the palms in uh, the hands down. Okay. This is a core pose. You'll feel it for sure in your abs. Right. Now, if you like that, then you can bring the toes turned down and straighten your legs so that you're in forearm plank. And you don't have to stay here forever. You know, two or three breaths, one breath, depending on where you are and how you're feeling, is always good. Good, then exhale, come all the way back down. All right, and now I'm gonna come up. The next one I like to do is boat pose variation. Okay, so now, We'll be sitting, all right? And again, anytime you sit, you wanna open the hips. You internally rotate the upper inner thigh, I'll show you from here. Inter hey, come up here. Good. Internally ro rotate the upper inner thigh, take the leg, whole hip back. Internally rotate, whole hip back. That'll put you right on top of your sit bones. So I'll do it from the side. See how I take the leg back, and now I'm sitting upright. Okay, so now, from here, I don't, I'll lean back as a unit. Can you see I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing anything with the back, but keeping it in line as I lean back, all right? So I hold underneath the thighs, I lean back a little bit, and maybe I start walking on my heels towards me. Uh-huh. 
And you keep holding the thighs as you bring your belly towards your thighs, your thighs towards your belly. All right? So that's stage one. Good. So you can, that'll work you there. Stage two, right leg up, down. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, down. Then if that's good, bring both forelegs parallel to the earth, holding your belly to your thighs, your thighs to your belly. You breathe there for 20 minutes. I'm only kidding. Okay. You breathe there for a few breaths. Yeah. And just see how you feel. And again, you're holding your belly towards your thighs, your thighs towards you. Everything else is in alignment. You're in mountain pose from the crown of the head to the pelvic floor, your spine, your core. Good, then you can come back down. All right, you take a breath, or two or three. All right, then we'll try that maybe again, leaning back in alignment, bringing the four legs up, and maybe you lift both legs. Now, that'll, what'll help you is that you're gonna bring your hands to the upper inner thighs and really pull them apart as you lift the legs up. So you're more in full boat, except you don't have the arms out. And you breathe like that. Again, a couple of breaths, if you're able to do that. If you start seeing that happen, come back down. That puts too much pressure. If you're curling the back, that's one of the worst things for your low back. So don't stay there. If you find that happening, just work here until you get strong enough to gradually try one leg at a time in both. Then you can lift them up. And then eventually, maybe you can take both arms out for full boat, Navasana. And you won't stay there too long. So that's another good core pose. Okay, and so now let me just see how long, okay, good. I wanna make this about 20, 25 minutes. So after that, <clears throat> um, I, was, I would usually do a little more, but here, let's just, let's just come to bound ankles. So once again, what you do, you open the hips, you open the hips, all right? And then you bring your fingertips behind you so that helps you sit upright. All right, we're gonna make this a little energetic. So lift and spread your toes, the four points of the feet, big toe ball, little toe ball, inner and outer heel. You lift and spread those, and you're gonna isometrically pull your heels towards you as you try to pull them apart. Now pull your whole, your feet as a unit towards you as you try to pull the feet apart. Ooh, that'll wake up your hips. And this is, again, just lovely. It's balancing, which is really kind of nice. All right, then I'm gonna show you my favorite twist that's one of the last poses I do. I do it um, just about every day. All right, so I'm gonna come onto the earth. All right, and again, to lower yourself back, to protect your low back, all right, you wanna bring forearms to the earth and you slowly lower yourself down. I have to take off my glasses here or else the glasses crash into your eyes. All right, so now I'm lying in what's called constructive rest. All right, so my mat is extra wide, so, I'm gonna, so take your feet apart as wide as your mat, unless it's extra wide, in which case my feet would be up there. So take a, they're, my feet are about, oh, 18 inches apart, 16, 18 inches apart. My hands are by my side, palms up. All right, so now, let me do this one first. So walk your right foot all the way over so it's touching the left. Lift your left leg and cross the left thigh tightly over the right. What we've done is create what's called a hip bump so that when you go to the side, your hips will line up. All right, now take a nice breath in. Now, if you can't do that, you can have your legs in what we call figure four, and that will give you a similar experience. But if you're able to bring the upper inner thighs, uh, the, cross the thighs over each other, that's going to feel really nice. Now you take a nice breath in. Exhale, twist to the right. Now, as far as what goes on to your head, with your head, generally, I'm gonna to look to the left, and that opens up the head, neck, and shoulders. So this is what it looks like. This is Garudasana, Garudasana twist on the ground. Um, so the legs are like in eagle legs. And you take a few breaths here. And generally, I stay here for a good minute or more, just letting everything settle in. My hips are stacked in a nice way, they're comfortable. My legs are grounded, my arms are grounded, and my head and neck get a chance to 
open a little more. So it's really a nice pose. But we won't stay there two minutes today. All right, now to come out, please lift the left leg off the right first. You're in a very deep supine twist. You don't want to, I mean, there are some people strong enough and they'll squeeze the upper inner thighs together and come back. I have low back issues, so I know the cautions that most Americans need. All right. So now let's do the same thing on the other side. Take your left foot all the way over to your right. Lift your right leg, cross your right thigh over the left. Take a nice breath in. As you exhale, twist to the left this time. And this time I'll look to the right. So this is a super relaxing pose. And it's just a lovely way to twist our good at cleaning things out and also at balancing and equalizing. So, uh, you know, we did uh, a sort of active standing practice and we've come down now to finish with a few uh, poses on the floor to, curl, to cool everything down, to bring it all to a, uh, a complimentary close. So after a few breaths here, uh, or several minutes, not several minutes, but you know, several breaths. You're going to lift the right leg, come back to the center, reposition the hips. Yeah. All right, so before we, I would do, and for just a 20 minute practice or so, I do two or three minutes of Shavasana, uh, which is course pose at the very end. All right, so, but before we do, we just did a twist. That's an asymmetrical pose. You want to finish with a symmetrical one. So I like to bring the knees in towards the chest. Now, you can hold behind the thighs. You can even, if you have issues with, um, you can't bring the knees in for whatever reason, you can put one palm on the top of each kneecap with the fingertips pointed towards the feet and let your arms just go long as your lower legs relax. And this is a passive back traction. So this is a nice way to uh, let this be your last pose before Shavasana um, as well. But if not, you can interlace your hands around the fronts of the knees or the backs of the thighs, or use a strap to hold there as well. All right, and then as I inhale, I draw my knees towards me, holding them there. Now, what you don't want to do is lift up so much that you flatten the back. So even as I hold here, my sit bones are pointed towards the earth. They're aiming in the direction of the earth. So on the inhale, I draw my knees towards me. As I as exhale, lift shoulders, neck, and head towards the knees. Now, I'm not trying to curl up and touch. That's hard on my neck. So then I come back out. Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> Thank you, darling, for the kitty kiss. Good. And then you can do that once, or you can do it twice more. And I like to do it three times. So inhale, knees to the heart. Exhale, shoulders, neck, and head as a unit. And you hear I can still talk, I'm not straining. Then exhale, come back down. Inhale, knees to the heart. Exhale, shoulders, neck, and head as a unit. Come back up. And then inhale to come back down. Bring your legs to the ground, feet to the ground. And then as you're ready, just allow yourself to take corpse, to take, just move into corpse pose. All right, so your legs are out. If you have low back issues, roll a blanket or a towel, put behind the backs of your knees. If you have neck issues or head issues, uh, you know, who has head issues? Everybody has head issues. So if you have neck tightness, and especially if your chin's up here, put a blanket or a towel underneath the back of your head to support your neck. And then you're just gonna lie here for just, let's just say today, just one nice, a few nice breaths, just a, a minute today to finish things off. So as you lie here, just notice how it feels. Close your eyes or softly focus them. And then just notice, I'm just going to sit up so I can, you can hear me better. But as you lie there, just take several breaths as you first lie down. Just allow the breath to move in and out. And then soften your entire body. It's nice to start with the face. That's where we hold so much tension. So soften the corners of your mouth, the corners of your eyes. Notice if, there, if your forehead feels like there's some wrinkles in it, can you soften your forehead? Soften the sides of your throat. Feel where your 
body touches the mat, the earth. And just allow your arms and legs to be completely heavy and relaxed. And stay here for another few breaths, just another 30 seconds or so. That's all it takes. If you're doing an hour and a half practice, you want 10 minutes. For 20 minutes, you just want a few minutes of grounding to let everything come in uh, that you've done uh, and fill you full of the energy of life, the prana that flows uh, on our breath as we breathe in and out. And then to come out, as if you're used to doing yoga, you'll come out in your normal way and I'll talk you through it. If you're not, please bend your knees with the soles of the feet on the floor and then roll to your right, which is what we talk about doing because that's rolling in the, the way that nature rolls. But if that rolling to the right is not good for your body for whatever reason, then roll to your left. And especially if you're pregnant, roll to your left. Roll on the side that suits you best. Cradle your head with your arms. And then continue to roll the upper body towards the earth. Press your hands into the earth to walk you back up to a seated pose. Take a good seat, just like when we started. And then bring your hands to your heart, to Anjali Mudra. And close your eyes or softly focus them. And notice how you feel now as compared to when you started uh, your practice this morning or whenever you're doing it. And be thankful for your ability to be embodied, to move, to breathe, to be in a place where you can do yoga, to have the resources to be online and join in at a community yoga. And just hold everybody and everything else in your heart uh, with a sense of gratitude for this gift of life. And then if you'd like, please join me in one final arm. So please exhale completely and then inhale. And after your next inhale, uh, please join me. So inhale. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste. And I hope you've enjoyed this brief practice. And again, you can do it anytime you want. You can do it with cat. You can do it with dog. You can do it with kids if you can just have them walk around where you are. So it's accessible. It's not long. And I encourage you to give it a try. And you can do it anytime you want. And thank you for joining me. Namaste, y'all. Hope to see you in the Zoom rooms more. Actually, this is just a, an iPad room.